Search the Commonwealth for towns with a mill history and you'll find dozens. But we hit the road to find mill towns. That's towns with M-I-L-L -L right there in the name, see? Sorry, Milton and Milford, there are only three. First up, Millis, a Metro West town of just over 8,000 with enough history, character, and charcuterie to be well worth the trip. Out Route 109. This is not a mill town, never was really. Right? No, it was a farming community. Nathan Maltinsky is chair of the Millis Historical Commission. Let me just ask straight up. The new town of Millis is named for Lansing Millis just a short period before he died, and he was fabulously wealthy. Was the town perhaps hoping to be included in Lansing's will? I don't believe he left any financial. It didn't work. He left us the Herman Shoe Building, the Coleco Bottling Company. So there were substantial buildings and, and businesses that he set the town up for that prospered for quite a long time. Parts of that history are on display right here in the fully restored Niagara Firehouse Museum, and for good reason. Clico was the first to put a metal cap on a soda bottle, and Herman boots were standard issue for soldiers in both world wars. The factory worked 24-7 back in the days. You could go through in the middle of the night and they would still be sewing shoes and leather goods for the military. But the star of the museum is this 1857 Niagara hand pump. Kids love it. Yeah. Kids love it and there's a lot of adults that love history. Correct me if I'm wrong, but when you get the school kids in here. That is a telltale sign of a fire engine. <laughs> From fire bells to dinner bells across town, we find Laura Tangerini, former owner of Tangerini Spring Street Farm, where they serve up produce and community. It's all local. We don't go into the market and buy bananas or oranges or anything like that. How key is the connection with your customers? They're everything. And I'm gonna get teary-eyed, I'm sorry. <laughs> When they come across the parking lot, we say hello like they're guests in our home because they are. Being treated like family is also central to the success of Uncle Ned's Fish Factory, which draws customers from New Hampshire to New York. It's not what you sell, it's what you don't sell. So we try to be very careful about not distributing sick fish. Here, you'll find about 800 species of fish hand-picked by Ned and his staff. Right down here, we have some axolotls. So if you look really close at their little faces, you can see that they've got those really cute gills, they've got really, you know, really cute little smiles, and those guys get about a foot long. Next, we pass Oak Grove Farm, once the largest dairy farm in New England and former home to town founder, Lansing Millis. We're en route to this hidden gem, Harky's Wine and Spirits. Inside is a guy who may look like Santa on spring break, but is actually world-class wine expert, Bob Harky. This is really a genuine mom and pop, right? Dad passed away years ago. Mom's still working here at the age of 88. My brother's here. And we've been here like since the early 70s. Are people surprised when they come in here? People in the wine trade come in here from around the world and they go, this is like the best selection of wine I've ever seen. And they take home more wine than they sell. Harky has tasted and approved every bottle in the shop himself, but don't call him a sommelier. Sommelier is only someone who works in a restaurant. I teach people to be sommeliers. Many people, I think, have that sort of sense about wine. Like, if it's not, you know, over 25 bucks, how good can it be? But you sell wine, I mean, it's under $10, and you'd swear that with the right food, it's a good deal. And I tell people, if you can't taste the difference, don't spend the money. But the problem is I have to taste 50 bad wines to find a good $10 bottle of wine. More sage advice comes when you ask about a wine pairing. When matching wine and food, the sauce is the boss. The protein is almost neutral, so the biggest concentration of flavor and texture comes from how you sauce or season. And if that's not clear enough, there's always Bob's handwritten cheat sheets. Hmm, obscure red alpine grape for cheese and charcuterie. Semi-sweet for turkey or Asian takeout. Ketchup covered cuisine. Yes, sir. <laughs> Explain, please. 
ketchup is a sauce, just yes. like gravy is a sauce. And, and as so we know, the sauce is the boss. The sauce is the boss. And so ketchup has some sweetness to it. I want that little bit of fruitiness to balance the sweetness in the ketchup. You've been doing this a long time. Daddy, what do you do for a living? He tastes wine. <laughs> you can't get that job. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's a great job. Sauce is the boss. I love that. Our wine expert, Bob Harkey, says the most common mistake people make is not letting the bottle breathe. Bob says open the bottle at least a half an hour before drinking, as wine is a living organism that needs to wake up. And unlike the rest of us, it doesn't have the advantage of drinking a cup of coffee. And back to Tangerini Farms. Since Ted first visited, the farm has changed hands. The couple who had previously managed the farm have now purchased it from the Tangerini family and are happily upholding the farm traditions. Up next.